Hello everybody, this is Gregory with How I Lost Over 100 Pounds and I've left it off for 30 plus years where there should be no hesitance in your weight loss and maintenance. Today we're going to talk about whether or not you should do bariatric surgery. Now before we begin, if you need help with weight loss, contact me through the Clarity FM link down here in the episode notes. Also check out my website, Naturopathic Earth, which has tons of articles and recipes, hundreds of them. Check out my two books. And if you appreciate my content, there is a link for PayPal. Now, bariatric surgery. I've talked about this in the Confessions of an Obese Child and Reflections of a Weight Loss Sawyer, my personal playlist. Definitely check that out if you're new to the channel. How, when I was fat, and this goes back to 1990, we didn't really have the, the, the great biohacks that we have today, like fasting and compressing your eating window. But also bariatric surgery. The bariatric surgery existed, but it wasn't to where it is now. And you do have this as an option. Any morbidly, you can, you maybe might see my dog behind me. Any morbidly overweight person has this option of bariatric surgery. Should you use this option? Well, I'll tell you this. It really depends on how much weight you need to lose. I would say that if you need to lose like 40, 50 pounds, I would probably tell you that I would not do bariatric surgery. If you need to lose 100, 150, 200 plus pounds, you probably need to do bariatric surgery. That's not to say there aren't people who have lost that weight, let's say you had to lose 150 pounds, who did it without bariatric. I'm saying that the chances of you losing, and more importantly, keeping that weight off, because we know at least 85% of people who lose weight, more than 50 pounds, regain it within three years. But your chances of, of, of keeping that off is going to be difficult. So if you have a lot of weight, like if you can barely walk or you're kind of bedridden, then I would definitely recommend bariatric surgery. That being said, I would tell you that if you were going to do bari bariatric surgery or if you're maybe on that border, maybe you're like at 50, 60, 70 pounds. And again, to me, that's just an arbitrary number. I definitely do research on it. You really do need to do research on the long-term implications of bariatric surgery because there are long-term implications to it and there's long-term repercussions to bariatric surgery and it's not just of course they're going to cut you open and essentially most and there's different types of them but uh, what they do is your esophagus is a tube that brings food down to your stomach the stomach is is the principal breaker downer of food with hydrochloric acid and it also turns it so when food leaves the small intestines it essentially must be in the form of like saliva before the small intestines can absorb it so what they do is they essentially attach the esophagus straight to the duodenum of your small intestine. So when you swallow food, and again, this is why chewing is important, it gets to the small intestine immediately. And the small intestines are like, whoa, I can't, I can't break this down. That's the job of the stomach, but we bypass the stomach. And that, that's why you can't eat a lot of food. So this is normally done lap laparoscopically. Therefore, they're not going like, to cut you open over here. Your stomach's over here in the upper left quadrant of your abdomen. They're not going to cut you up and they're going to make small incisions and then put in trocars and then cut, cut, burn, burn. And it's fascinating. You should definitely watch it if you're thinking about doing it. You can watch these surgeries on YouTube. But so it's not necessarily like you have to worry about infections. It's more about how there's certain foods you'll never be able to eat again. How there's going to be uh, discomfort. You might have discomfort quite often in your life because of this surgery. Many times, depending on the surgery you're going to get, you're going to have to go in and get things tightened again or redone again. Um, also, there's going to be a certain amount of food that you can only eat because, again, the food goes straight to your small intestines. Your small intestines are not capable of breaking down food. Their job, the villi cells there, is just to absorb the food that the stomach broke down. So you're dealing with all these issues. And there is a higher rate of uh, suicidal ideation uh, when you have bariatric surgery. That's why there are psychologists who interview you. So if you're going to do bariatric surgery, you have to get interviewed I wouldn't say have to, I'm sure there's a lot of bariatric surgeons that, that will go around this, but you typically are interviewed by some sort of mental health professional because they need to, to vet and make sure that you are, don't have the signs of suicidal thoughts or ideation because they know the stats bear that out, that you're more likely to do that thing. And so you do have to get vetted by a mental health professional on that. So it's understand that too. So. It's kind of like, I would not say it's the same thing as the, the gender reordering assignment surgeries they're doing with transgender people, but those are definitely long-term and permanent. Uh, but, but you need to think long-term about it. There are a lot of people that have lost a lot of weight with bariatric, and I'm, I think it's great that, it, that people today have that as their recourse. 
If I was morbidly overweight, like 100 pounds like I was, I probably would not have done bariatric, but that's just me. If you guys watched the episode on Reflections of a Weight Loss where on my bloopy, my loose skin on my abdomen, I had thought about getting going to surgery and getting my tummy tightened and all those things, but I, ch- I chose, and this is just my choice, I just didn't want to go over, under the knife for that. But ultimately, you have to make a decision. But the, the, the point of this video is to do your due diligence. If you talk to a bariatric surgeon, of course they're going to tell you, just like if you talk to an oncologist, yeah, chemo is you know, the best way to treat cancer, even though statistically there's only four cancers where chemo is effective. Uh, Wilms tumor, testicular cancer, lymphoma, but either way. So I wouldn't necessarily talk to a bariatric surgeon about that. I would talk to people, go to Facebook groups of people who've had bariatric surgery, talk to them, talk to as many people that are in that field as you can, and then of course talk to one or two bariatric surgeons, because there are different procedures and each of them are gonna have a different regiment that you're gonna have to do afterwards. So I would definitely, this is one of those where knowledge is power and the more knowledge you have on this before you go under the knife, the better it is because you are going under the knife. And yes, if you're 200 pounds overweight, you're probably not gonna lose it the regular way and maybe doing the bariatric is the best way because you will drop the weight. More often than that, you will drop the weight. And then at that point, you can use strategies like like I talk about on this channel to keep the weight off, but you get that kind of big bump of losing a lot of weight pretty fast, and then you're gonna have to deal with all the side effects of bariatric and all the psychological stuff too, because in closing, bariatric surgery is kind of like playing shoots and ladder, and you you get on the ladder and you go all the way to the 81st uh, number. You're still not dealing with the trauma that made you overweight in the first place. You're You're not dealing with your disordered relationship with food. Uh, so you're still gonna have to deal with all of those things as well. This is why, like I talked about in the previous episode, go to therapy and do the deep work and find out why you have a disordered relationship with food. But overall, in closing, I think it's a good tool for people that fit a certain criteria. And if you are gonna do bariatric, do the research and understand the long-term implications of doing it. Guys, post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If any of you have done bariatric or you thought about it or you have family members that have done it, Hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray.